If you're into mechanical keyboards, there's a chance that you guys have come across hot swappable ones. Notably, there's the GK64, which is what I'm typing on with this old footage, and the GMMK. But with a budget, the keyboard doesn't sound that nice sometimes. However, there are many new keyboards coming out with hot swappable PCBs, but they're pretty darn expensive. So this is what I did instead. This is what I'll be converting today, an old wise WY60. Here's the typing sound of the keyboard as is. As you can hear, the rattle from the stabilizers are absolutely bleh. That'll definitely be fixed along the way. So first I had to check that the keyboard actually worked. Sadly, it uses this janky connector. It's called a 4P4C connector. So I first have to make, I have to make a converter for that. To make the converter, I got a 4P4C port for pretty cheap on eBay. I also got a Teensy, hooked up the port to it like you see in the video, and I flashed Sora's firmware on it. I'll leave the in-depth instructions by Sora in the description below, but yeah, thankfully the keyboard worked after that. Now comes the disassembly. There's actually no branding outside saying that it's a wise keyboard, so here's a proof of it. So yeah, it was kind of a gamble when I bought this originally. I got it at a fairly reasonable price, probably because it was an unbranded keyboard. The branded ones are usually because they know they have vintage cherry black switches in them, which are worth a lot. After disassembling and removing the keycaps was desoldering the switches. And desoldering... is the absolute most tedious process anyone can ever go through. It's that 204 freaking times. But that, believe it or not, it's not even the most tedious part of this whole project. With the switches you soldered, now you have to install these Milmax sockets. These are put where switch pins usually go in, and if I'm correct, this is the old way of making keyboards hot swappable before those convenient kale hot swap things came in. And this was the most tedious part of the whole project. The sockets are so tiny, so I can't grab them with my fingers, and I don't have a good tweezer, so yeah, it was a pain. And after that, you kind of have to push them in with your soldering tip, so it stays into the PCB. Which you gotta do, because after that, you gotta solder the sockets onto the PCB. Holy heck. Just as a quick note, this PCB lacks the holes for the fixing pins on switches. So if I want to install a switch with fixing pins, that means I have to chop them off, which is quite unfortunate. Here is me putting back the case together finally, and I guess now I can talk about how I got this idea in the first place. I was inspired by this guy's project and keyboard where he put box navy switches in a wise WY50 chassis. And I'm a long time fan of his, and he instilled the notion that these old big keyboards produce great sounds, so I thought maybe that I can make the project then, but hot swappable. And here I am, finally doing it. Here's the satisfying part of the video, um, they're just switches that I found lying around, but um, yeah, for the alpha keys I put box royal switches, for the spacebar I put Hakko royal true switch, which is a really heavy tactile, um, for the modifiers and the number keys I put... Hakko Violets, which is a really nice and soft tactile. Um, for the numpad, I put NK Sherbet. They're pretty new. They're th <laughs> pretty nice. Um, and for the rest, I put switches that were on my other keyboards so I can test the sound and compare them. Here's the typing test. Remember, I said I'm gonna fix the spacebar, so here it is.
I, I just gotta say, like, the space bar, the quunk, is unreal. And even the box roast, which is a quunk, is absolutely insane. Also, here are some more switch sound comparisons. The switches on the left are box J's, and the switches on the right are Otemu Skies. This project in total was around $105. $50 for the keyboard itself, uh, $25 for the TNZ, and $30 for the middle max sockets. So yeah, not, not bad, not bad at all. And combined with the fact that if you sell those vintage black switches that you desoldered, you can get around $50 more. dollars. So that's like $55 you're paying for a pretty solid hot swap keyboard. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and um, also thank you for keeping up with my keyboard addiction, and maybe I'll see you guys next time.